Welcome to day 22 of Sparks in the Darkness. Our final day of this journey is here. We are in the day of Tisha B'Av itself, fasting and mourning over the destruction of our two temples. Happened thousands of years ago, but that every single generation we've repeated needs to mourn over various moments of destruction. Over the last few weeks, we've been memorializing different victims, different soldiers and citizens who were killed on October 7th and beyond throughout this horribly destructive year in our history as a nation. And I wanna conclude with a final thought, not just to wrap up this learning, but also to demonstrate our ability to move forward. I wanna begin, I wanna end rather the same way we began. We mentioned that there was an individual by the name of Rabbi Ephraim Oshri. Rabbi Oshri was someone, as we mentioned at the very beginning of this journey, who was a Rav throughout the times of the Holocaust, who was asked numerous she'elot, numerous halachic questions, and not just did he answer them, but he also wrote them down to share with us for generations to come to tell over the stories of those individuals who experienced horrors that were unimaginable during the Shoah. And here's a question that he received. Rabbi, do I recite Nachim, the prayer that we talk about, the rebuilding of Jerusalem that we recite in our Shmona Esri on Tisha B'Av, do I recite Nachim in my Birkat HaMazon, in my benching on Tisha B'Av? Say, what, what, is, what does this mean? Eating meals on Tisha B'Av, benching on Tisha B'Av, what was the context? So of course, he explains that while they were in the ghettos, they had gathered together on Tisha B'Av evening to do some sort of a semblance of a service for Tisha B'Av. They read Eicha, they were davening, reciting Kinos, the Lamentations, and all of a sudden the Nazi troops broke in and they decided that they did not have enough Jews who were working that evening. And so they grabbed multiple Jews and then they noticed, what were they doing of all things? that the Jews were mourning over the loss of their temple. And the Nazis said to the Jewish people, what are you crying about? What are you hoping for? There is no hope for you. You are never going to be saved from our hands. And Rabbi Oshri records that they beat them and chased them out of the house and basically made anyone who was gathered there push them out into an airfield. Many of the Jews that evening were taken to do back-breaking labor. And of course, it goes without saying that they were not required to fast. And when the Nazis, Yemach Shemam, when they fed them some food, of course they ate it. And it was at that point that they were given a piece of bread and some disgusting soup. And when they ate it, they asked Rabbi Oshri, do we recite Nachim in our benching? And he ended up answering in the affirmative because Chazal described that any sort of a prayer, like a benching or like a Shemona Esri that you say on Tisha B'av should have this prayer. And so that's why we say it at Mincha on Tisha B'av. And if a person needs to eat for whatever reason, you include it in your benching as well. But I think that this imagery of reciting Nachim during benching, during the times of the Holocaust, mourning over the loss of temples, thousands of years later in what was the worst destruction in Jewish history of the Holocaust itself, it's not only a horribly depressing image, but it's also a, an incredibly uplifting one. Because we as a nation demonstrate not just this constant subjugation that we have felt over the years, but of the theme that we have come back to time and time again throughout this year, of omdim aleinu lechalotenu, that they have stood up against us, the chol dor vador in every generation, the Kadosh Baruch Hu matzilinu miyadam. Hashem will save us, has saved us from their, hand, from their hands. Just as constant as it is that other nations attack us, so too is there a constant reality that we will be saved by Hashem and we will face brighter days in the coming redemption. And so just as this year has been one of such darkness, 
as there has been such negativity, such horror that we have seen in the world, not just in Israel, of course, but around the world in our Jewish communities here in Rochester and in other places as well. We've seen such horrible messaging towards the Jews. We know that just like we are being subjugated, so too will, be, will we be redeemed as well. And the constant reminder of that is the fact that we have the freedom to continue to mourn for our temple and that we still do mourn for our temple thousands of years later. Hashem should continue to give us the strength to live our lives in memory of all those who have not lived up until this day and that this should be the final Tisha B'Av of mourning and that by this time next year we should be celebrating with the Beis Hamikdash, with the Third Temple in Yerushalayim, with all of Klal Yisrael having come back together to dance in celebration, to spread peace and love throughout the entire world and throughout our people. Wish everyone a meaningful rest of your fast and look forward to God willing celebrating good times very soon as a nation.